So eat a huge breakfast when you come in before you take the ACT. Something with some toast, and maybe some eggs, and some orange juice or something, but not just a cup of coffee. Okay? Something that's going to have some glucose so your body can be breaking down during the test. And bring something to eat during the test so it's not a straight four hours. You can eat something while you're doing jumping jacks. All right, and letter C, cross the midline. Okay? In case you don't know, the right side of your brain controls your left body, and the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. So if you do some midline exercises at various points during the test, that's going to help your brain. Try a couple right now. What does it say on there? Move your left leg and your right arm simultaneously. My left leg. Right, switch. Try the other side. Uh, touch your elbow with your opposite leg as me. Grab your elbows with opposite hands. All right. Those kind of exercises, they're simple. You can do those while you're in between tests. Just like, oh man, my earlobes are itchy. All right. Turn the page. Turn the page. So that's pre-test stuff. I will have Mrs. Ensign email out a little checklist of things to do. Yeah. I can hear you. So, yeah. How many minutes? 20. Every 20. Oh, that's it. Right. Ready to party! 20. Sorry. Good question. Okay. I was back. I am a C virgin. I have a spiky hard exterior. But if you get to know me, you'll see I have a delicious tender. For activities, I enjoy sitting at the bottom of the ocean. I do not have many friends, because people often step on me and run away. All I want is someone to share my life with. So let's talk about the math section of the ACT. 60 questions, 60 minutes. It's the longest single section. You, This is the one section you can use your calculator on. Some tips and suggestions, and then we'll do some math review. Use your calculator only when necessary. Sometimes your brain can work faster than your hand can move over the buttons. So if problems are simple, do them in your head. All right. Um, this rule applies also to problems. Um, it says you'll only be wasting time converting your decimal answer to fraction form. If a fraction problem gives all the answers in fractions, not decimals, Probably don't use your calculator. Questions on the ACT are designed to be answered within one minute. Everybody got time for that? They do not involve super intense calculations. If you find yourself trying to do the square root of 934, you've probably gone wrong somewhere. They're usually simpler than that. No calculation on the test, it's going to be that difficult. Drawing your workspace. Draw, work, do drawings. It's useful for drawings, especially when you're doing geometry type of problems. But let me tell you something about drawing. It engages the brain, so it gets you thinking a little better. But the other thing is, we're so used to working out our problems, the majority of us writing out every step, that's totally irrelevant on the ACT. Mr. Timmer is not looking to give you partial credit for a problem. So don't write out all the steps. Just write out the stuff you need to solve the problem, okay? Saves you a little bit more time. Nobody's looking at your work. You're just looking at your answer sheet. Sometimes on the ACT test, they'll put up partial answers, okay? It's a problem that's solved part of the way. Be careful of those. They're trying to get the people that race super quickly, and they're halfway through a problem, and they see where they're at, and they go with that as the answer. Letter D, the order of difficulty. The math test is arranged roughly in order of Nothing makes a woman feel more like a girl than a man who sings like a boy. Yeah, All right. So in the earlier section, you want to build up time so that you've got that to use in the later section. If you run into some problem, you're like, I totally forgot how to solve this, and it's in the earlier first 20 questions, don't spend five minutes on that question. Star it and come back. But think about banking up time to use later. Is Mr. Hackman still here? He He's also taking a lunch time as well. I'll have those run down a little bit. Uh, if you cannot solve a problem on your own and you 
already kind of gotten through most of the questions you want and you've got some spare time, use the answers to work backwards. Okay? Sometimes that helps. There are five answers there. One of them's got to be correct. Some problems work where you can take an answer and work backwards. All right. How about shortcuts and math intuition? Everybody got time for that. Sometimes there's more than one way to solve a problem. Okay, if I said, which is greater, a square with a side of four or a circle with a radius of four, there are three different ways to solve this. You could plug them each into their formulas. S squared, that's four by four, that's 16, pi r squared, r is four, uh, 16, 16 pi. You could draw them and see that visually. Or the quickest way might not appeal to all of you or might not be aware to all of you, but S squared and pi r squared are really the same formula, but the circle one has pi, so it has to be bigger. So just by looking at the formulas, they both have a variable squared, but the other one has an additional pi that has to be bigger. I don't have to do any math, I don't have to do any drawing, so the answer's already in front of me. Everybody got time for that! So option one would save you the most amount of time if you see it. All right, turn the page. Calculators are allowed. Yes, we already said that. Right here are probably a list of the most common math terms that you'll run across that the ACT is expecting you to be familiar with. Take two minutes right now, look at each one, and put a check mark if you know what it is. And if you don't, leave it blank. That's something you're going to have to look at before Friday. Take two minutes, go through that list, check off the ones you already know. All right, if you didn't finish, that's fine. Mind it? Wave if you know where these ladies' folders are. Thank you. talk like us. Does anyone else speak Australian? Can I get you to say with me, how are you? Yeah. So those were some common terms. Let's turn the page. We're going to go through the different sections the ACT covers. Just try to review some really old stuff. As we move along, we'll do less problems because they'll have been more recent to you. And at some point, we'll just have to stop and take the math ACT section. But first, have you ever been to Australia? I've never been to Australia. 
Oh, uh, cool. Do you think you're disciplined? Disciplined? What kind of question is that? I thought it was good. <laughs> All right, let's go way back to seventh and eighth grade and talk about arithmetic. All right, exciting. A little review of numbers. Real numbers, the broadest category. Everything is a real number, except for the imaginary numbers. They can be decimals, they can be things like pi. Properties of real numbers. Um, do I have a mistake on there? Some days, some years I have. Is negative times a negative, does that equal a positive on your paper? See that under number one? No. All right, we got to fix that mistake. No. A negative times a negative is a positive. <laughs> you fix. Oh, those are the answers. So make sure you fix that right under number one, where it says properties of real numbers. Negative times a negative is a positive. Integers are not decimals or fractions. You see them there. Some examples: negative two, negative one. What are examples of whole numbers? You shout them out. One, two, but what's the critical one? Zero. zero is part of whole numbers. Make sure you have zero in there. That is literally in the word. There's a, oh, there's zero. Natural numbers, the smallest group. That's one and two and three and going up, but not zero. So number three, that group has zero. Number four, the natural numbers do not. Consecutive integers are things like three, four, five, six. They usually represent like n and plus one and plus two. Let's talk about fractions. A proper fraction is smaller on top, bigger on bottom, like one half. Improper is bigger on top, smaller on bottom, seven fourths. Mixed is like two and a half, a number and a fraction. You can change a mixed number. I have an example for you right there in the notes if you're looking. Fractions can be reduced to their lowest forms if possible. Like 8 sixteenths, if you divide the top and the bottom both by 8, drops to a half. Common denominators are numbers that are multiples of the bottom numbers of two or more fractions. So like one-third and one-fourth, the common denominator there is 12. That's the first number 3 and 4 have in common. If you're going to add or subtract fractions, denominator must be the same. So three sevenths and two sevenths, you can add those. Three sevenths and two eighths, you could not add those. You know, really easily. If the denominator is not the same, find the common denominator. So there's one third and one fifth. They have 15 in common. So I've changed each of those to be over 15. Five over 15 and three over 15 is eight over 15. For multiplying, the denominator doesn't have to be the same. Three quarters times a fifth, I do the top numbers multiplied, I do the bottom numbers multiplied. If you're going to divide by fractions, you don't. You really just flip one and do multiplication again. Decimal is a different way of writing a fraction. Most calculators can convert. You should know how your calculator converts before Saturday. How to go from fraction to decimal, how to go back. Percent is a special fraction that has 100 as the denominator. You can move them over get 2%, move it to the right, to go back to decimal, move it to the left. And a few random math things, and we'll try some questions. The absolute value of a number is its value without any sign. So if you see it inside of those straight lines, make it positive. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting it from the other side. When you use a calculator, use parentheses anytime you can. A lot of mistakes are made on calculators when parentheses aren't used. You can overuse parentheses and you're usually okay, but underusing them you usually get into trouble. Overuse parentheses when possible. Always put negative numbers in parentheses. All right, turn the page. Why don't you, if you don't want to work at my pace, go ahead and work on those eight questions a second on your own. I'll be talking through some of them if you're not sure. The largest number one, largest factor of 25 and 40, that is, what is the largest number that can go into both? You can quickly try 8, no, not into 25. 10, no, not into 25. 15, no, not into 25. 25, yes, but not into 40. It's got to be A. Number two is a simple question, but it takes a while. That might be one to star and come back. How many prime numbers are greater than 50 but less than 60? 
So I'm thinking 51, 52, 53. I can throw out all the even numbers right away. Yeah, how many prime numbers? What's that? This is how many prime numbers. Right. Are greater than 50 but less than 60. So I can throw out the even numbers, 52, 54, 56, 58, and throw those out. So I'm left with 51, 53, 55, I know that's divided by, by 5, so I throw that out. But 51, 53, 57, 59, are they prime? I don't know. We've divided all the numbers by 2. Divide them all by 3. 51 divided by 3 is 17. So I can take out 51, 53, I don't know, 57 would be 51, 54, 57. That's multiple of 3. I have 53 and 59. And then be divided by 4? No, that's even. 5? No. 6? No, that's even. 7? <clears throat> no, 7 times 8 is 56. And then 8? I've already done that. 8 times 7 is 56. I'm done. 2. 2 is the answer. That one would have taken maybe some time. So that might be a, a type of problem where if you're like, I have no idea how to solve this. We'll come back later after I've banked some time. Number 3. For any whole number n, which of the following must be odd? Um, which one of those with no matter what I put in, I'll get an odd number? Try a couple of examples. Um, put in a 1, we're going to get the first one, an even number. Put in a 1 and the second one, we'll get an odd. Put in a 2, we get an even. It must be 3. 3 only. No matter what I put in for three, do I get an odd number? Yes. All right. Here's number four. Seven eighths divided by three fourths. What I'm going to do is flip three fourths around to four thirds and multiply. And I'll get 28. That's seven times four over 24. That's eight times three. I need to simplify that. But which one of those is the only one that's more than one? A. I don't even need to simplify. I know my answer is A. All right, number five. I see two negatives in there. What's my final answer going to be? Positive. So I can cross off A and C before I even do anything. <coughs> and now I can just go 3 times 5 is 15 times 2 is 30. D. Find the median of the following numbers. Ooh, that's just one where I need to know vocabulary. Median is what? The middle number, not the average, but the middle. So arrange those in order. One, two, three, seven, eight. Middle number is? Three. Answer C. Find the mode. Remember what mode is? Number that repeats the most often. The answer in seven is D, two. I know what mode is. That question takes me five seconds. That thank me 55 seconds to spend on another problem. Express 0.111 as a percent. Move that decimal to the right two spots. The answer is B. So on some of those easier ones, I thank time. That's good. You did it! Congratulations! World's best cup of coffee. Great job, everybody. It's great to meet you. Hi. All right, those are answers in case you didn't write them down. Circle them. Let's talk about algebra summary. Exponents, take a look at number one. When you multiply exponents, you add them together when their bases are multiplied. A root is a number that is multiplied by a specified number of times to so give the original. Basic algebra operations follow the same rules. Only like terms may be combined. 5x five, five plus 3x. What will I give them? 5 over x plus 3 over x. 8 over x. Remember how to FOIL? First, outside, inside, last. There's an example there of something being FOILed. Factoring is the opposite of FOIL. You have to ask yourself, what would multiply to make x squared? What would multiply to make 2? What would add to make 3? First power linear equations use SAD map. That's the order of operations backwards. When you're trying to 
it acts alone you use order of operation factors. When you solve contracts, variables to the second power. Get the square root of both sides if possible. Solving simultaneous equations, set one equal to a single variable and plug it into the other. We're on to number nine. Inequalities can be worked as if the inequality is an equal sign, except when you divide by a negative number, remember to flip the inequality. Slope is rise over run. It's usually represented with the letter M. And there's a formula for slope that you should probably be pretty familiar with. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Number 11 has the three different line equations, linear equations. Some other things to be able to calculate, finding the midpoint and the distance between two points. Let's go over these practice problems. Number one, this is something I need to FOIL. Multiply the first two numbers, W, Y. Multiply the last numbers, negative ZX. I only have two answers left that will work, E and D. And if I multiply negative Z and X, or negative Z and W, I'll have negative ZW. It's gotta be E. All right, number two is the opposite. I need to know what things multiply. What would give me P squared is P times P. All the answers still work. What would give me three? What numbers multiplied together give me three? A and C are my only answers. Which numbers added together would give me positive four? A. The answer to number two is A. Number three, for what values of X is eight minus three X greater than 35? Eight minus something has to be bigger than 35. That means these have to be something negative to change that sign. So my answers can only be B or D. I've already eliminated the rest. If I put a negative three in there, that would give me negative three times negative three. That's nine. That's not going to work. Even a negative four is not going to work. It's got to be D. It's the only one to get me over 35. And then there's a there's number four, finding slope. 15 minus 5 is 10. <coughs> Can you know where Brayden and Peyton are? Brayden. Brayden. All right. Where's Peyton? All right. Oh, I'm out here. No, they're different. Oh. Sit by Keats. Learn some fun facts. All right. The answer to number four is two. Beneath the clothes, we find a man. And beneath the man, we find his nucleus. Nucleus? Yes. So, Bianca, is that Arab? <laughs> Couldn't begin with a Fontana. I guess I know the Fontana. Mmm, what's that smell? It's a Daddy D. I love it. It works 60% of the time, all the time. <laughs> I've talked a little bit of geometry, and this will be less and less because you recently had geometry. Um, parallel lines never intersect. A third line creates all of those angles, if you remember. Two lines perpendicular to the same are parallel to each other. Once you draw that situation in the space below, do a little drawing right now. Two lines perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. You draw that scenario right now. Do it! You should have something that looks like an equal sign with a line cutting right through it. All right, if their angles are less than 90, we call them acute. Over 90 is obtuse. Polygons have various numbers of sides, triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons. Remember how to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And the area of a triangle is 1 half pH. Rectangles are quadrilaterals with four 90 degree angles. And then we've got some information about circles. The area is pi r squared. The circumference is 2 pi r. There's a few other volume lists there. It's not a bad idea to re refresh your memory on various formulas. Don't stress about learning every single formula. That's a little bit of a waste. 
but remembering the things you've learned before, that can be helpful in the next few days. Let's do a few practice problems with geometry. If the radius of a circle is five, what is the circumference? I know circumference is two pi r, so two times five, 10 is b. Number two is an exceptionally tricky question. What is the number of degrees in the angle formed by the minute and hour hands of a clock at 220? So you're thinking to yourself, 2 o'clock and 20, it has to look like that. One pointed at the 2 and one pointed at the 10. There's five minutes of time between each one, so to speak. How much is represented by a five minute segment? 60, but well, how much time has elapsed? If it's 220, this has moved a little bit more, a third more. So the actual answer is D, 50 degrees. Truly, that's wrong. What do you think? She, it's terrible. She has beautiful eyes, and her hair smells like cinnamon. Mm hmm. Loud noises. And number three is just. Casting your knowledge if you know how to calculate the area of a triangle. One half V H, so one half four times five. That's half of twenty, that's ten. A couple pages left. Almost done. Oh, give me crickets. That's a mouthful of horns. I seem to do that basic. You would do with your hair. My eggs have chores. Whammy! I knew he had another had dance with. Must have been bad. Your hair looks like wet popcorn. <laughs> All right. Okay. And a little bit of trig. Remember the wisdom of Chief Sokotoa? So, that stands for sine, is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. There's some useful trigonomic ratios. If you have had some trig, take a look at the stuff you remember and refresh your memory. If you have it, don't stress out about that. It's just nothing you're gonna, gonna have in your memory banks. But the point of this class is to refresh stuff you've already done. If you're familiar with the unit circle, remember how that works. You move counterclockwise on the unit circle. And there's some specific trig values in number four that are kind of handy. Let's try that one practice problem. I want to know what H is. What do I have? I want to know the opposite side of the angle, and I have the adjacent side of the angle. So I should be using tangent, because I want to know O, and I have A. So I'm going to say the tangent of 18 is opposite over adjacent, H over 100. Tangent of 18 equals H over 100. So I'll multiply both sides by 100 and find out it's 32.5. All right. Next page. Fun facts with geeks. Yeah! Spiders are found on every continent of the world, they said. Antarctica! Did you learn it? You guys suck. <laughs> Some common formulas are listed there. These would be helpful to look over before Friday. Um, you don't need to memorize ones you don't know. That's kind of useless and a waste of time. But ones you've used before, again, if you can refresh your memory on stuff you've done, that's the point. Some tips and strategies. This, out of all the four sections, is the section that can be practiced for the most. If you are going to do anything before the ACT, do some math problems, all right? Uh, especially in areas that you have done before but haven't done in a while. There's usually 20 easy math problems, 20 moderate, and 20 hard. So work to bank time. Use your calculator when you think it would be best, but there are times where it's faster to use your head. Um, so where are we? Number five, some problems you don't even need to solve fully, others you do, but be aware of that. Be careful on easy and minor problems. Make sure you read the question and make sure what it's asking. And like I said, you can practice for this section. Ah. Ah. Ah.
I'll just sit here for a minute, but we don't have time. We don't have time for this. We'll end there with Cody selling drugs. How oh, Caleb. Caleb. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, take out your answer key. Your answer key. Not key, your answer form. Answer form. Then take out your ACT book and find the math section. Section number one. Math version. Uh, section two. Section two in your books. The longest section, but like I said, this right here, the 60 minutes, really help you on Saturday because we're going to review a lot of problems. All right, you have 60 minutes. You may begin.